Chapter 8 Prayers Salat Chapter 1 Hov al Salat, the prayer was prescribed on the night of Al Isra, miraculous night journey, of the Prophet PBUH to Jerusalem and then to the heavens. <laughs> Narrated Abu Dhar, Allah's Messenger said, While I was at Mecca, the roof of my house was open and Gabriel descended, opened my chest and washed it with some some water. Then he brought a golden tray full of wisdom and faith and having poured its contents into my chest, he closed it. Then he took my hand and ascended with me to the nearest heaven. When I reached the nearest heaven, Gabriel said to the gatekeeper of the heaven, open the gate. The gatekeeper asked, who is it? Gabriel answered, Gabriel. He is asked, is there anyone with you? Gabriel, Gabriel replied, yes, Muhammad, I is with me. <clears throat> he asked, has it been called? Gabriel said, yes. So the gate was opened and we went over the nearest heaven and there we saw a man sitting with some people on his right and some on his left. When he looked towards his right, he laughed and when he looked towards his left, he wept. Then he said, Welcome, O pious prophet and pro pious son. I asked Gabriel, Who is he? <coughs> he replied, He is Adam, and the people on his right and the left and left are the souls of his offspring. Those on his right are the people of paradise, and those on his left are the people of hell. And when he took looks towards his right, he laughs, and when he looks towards his left, he weeps. Then he ascended with me till he reached the second heaven, and he, Gabriel, said to its gatekeeper, Open the gate. The gatekeeper said to him, The same as the gatekeeper of the first heaven had said, and he opened the, the gate. Anna said, Abu Dar added that the prophet met Adam, Idris, Moses, Jesus, and Abraham. He, Abu Dar, did not mention on which heaven they were, but he mentioned that the prophet met Adam on the nearest heaven and Abraham on the sixth heaven. Anna said, when Gabriel along with the prophet passed by Idris, the latter said, welcome, O pious prophet and pious brother. The prophet asked, who is he? Gabriel replied, he is Idris, the prophet added. I passed by Moses and he said, welcome, O pious prophet and pious brother. I asked Gabriel, who is he? Gabriel re replied, He is Moses. Then I passed by Jesus and he said, Welcome, O pious brother and pious prophet. I asked, Who is he? Gabriel re replied, He is Jesus. Then I passed by Abraham and he said, <clears throat> Welcome, O pious brother, no, O pious prophet and pious son. I asked Gabriel, Who is he? Gabriel replied, He is Abraham. The prophet added, Then Gabriel ascended with me to a place where I heard the creak, creaking of the pens. Ibn Hassan and Anas bin Malik said, The prophet said, no, the prophet said Then Allah enjoined 50 prayers on my followers when I returned with this order of Allah. I passed by Moses who asked me, What has Allah enjoined on your followers? I replied, He has enjoined 50 prayers on them. Moses said, Go back to your Lord and appeal for reduction, for your followers, followers will not be able to bear it. <clears throat> so I went back to Allah and requ requested for reduction, and he re reduced it to half. When I passed by Moses again and inform informed him about it, he said, Go back to your Lord, as your followers will not be able to bear it. So I returned to Allah and requested to, for further reduction and half of it was reduced. I again passed by Moses, and he said to me, Return to your Lord, for your followers will not be able to bear it. So I returned to Allah, and he said, These are five prayers, and they are all equal to fifty in reward, for my word does not change. I returned to Moses, and he told me to go back once again. I replied, Now I feel shy of asking my Lord again. Then Gabriel took me till we reach Sidrat il Muntaha, low tree of the utmost boundary.
which was shrouded in colors indescribable. Then I was admitted into paradise where I found small tents or walls made of pearls and its earth was of musk. Narrated Aisha The mother of believers Allah enjoined a prayer when he enjoined it. It was two rakat only in every prayer, both when in residence or on or on uh, <coughs> or on journey. Then the prayers of offered on journey remain the same, but the rakat of the prayers for non-travel travelers were increased. Chapter two: It is obligatory to wear clothes while offering a salat the prayers. Narrated. Um Atiyah. We were ordered to bring out our menstruating woman and wailed woman in the religious gatherings and invocation of Muslims on the two Eid festivals. These menstruating women were to keep away from their musalla. A woman uh, asked, O oh Allah's Messenger, what about one who does not have a whale? He said, Let her share the whale of her companion. Chapter 3 To tie Isar dress worn below the waist at one's back while offering Salat prayers. Narrated Muhammad bin al Munqadir. Once Jabir prayed with his Isar tied to his back while his clothes were lying beside him on a wooden peg, wooden peg, somebody asked him, Do you offer your prayer in a single Isar? He replied, I did so to show it to a fool like you. Had anyone of us two garments in the lifetime of the Prophet? Narrated Muhammad bin al Munqadir. I saw Jabir bin Abdullah praying in a single garment, and he said that he had seen the Prophet praying in a single garment. Chapter 4 <laughs> To offer a salat the prayers with a single garment wrapped around the body. Around the body. <clears throat> Narrated Umar bin Abi Salama. The Prophet prayed in one garment and crossed its end. Narrated Umar bin Abi Salama. I saw the Prophet offering prayers in a single garment in the house of Um Salama, and he had crossed its ends around his shoulders. <laughs> Narrated Umar bin Abi Salama. In the house of Um Salama, I saw Allah's Messenger offering prayers wrapped in a single garment around his body with its ends crossed round his shoulders. <coughs> Narrated Abu Mura, the freed slave of Um Hani. Um Hani, the daughter of Abi Talib, said, I went to Allah's Messenger in the year of the conquest of Mecca and found him taking a bath, and his daughter Fatima was screening him. I greeted him. He asked, Who is she? I replied, I am Um Hani bint Abi Talib. He said, Welcome, O Um Hani. When he finished his bath, he stood up and prayed eight rakat while wearing a single garment wrapped round his body. And when he finished, I said, O oh Allah's Messenger, my brother has told me that he will kill a person whom I give sh shelter, and that person is so and so, the son of Hubera. The Prophet said, we shelter the person whom you have sheltered, Um Hani added, and that was before noon duha. Narrated Abu Huraira A person asked Allah's Messenger about the offering of the prayer in a single garment. Allah's Messenger replied, has every one of you got two garments? Chapter 5 if someone offers Salat prayer wrapped in a single garment, he should cross its corners around, around his shoulders. Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, None of you should offer prayer in, in a single garment that does not cover the shoulders. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger said, Whoever prays in a single garment must cross its end over the shoulders. <clears throat> Chapter 6 If the garment is tight over the body. Narrated Said bin al Harit. I asked Jabir bin Abdullah about praying in a single garment. He said, 
I traveled with the Prophet during some of his journeys and I came to him at night for some purpose and I found him praying at that time. I was wearing a single garment which, with which I covered my shoulders and prayed by his side. When he finished the prayer he asked, O oh Jabid, what has brought you here? I told him what I wanted. When I finished he asked, <coughs> O oh Jabir, what is this garment which I have seen and with which you cover your shoulders? I replied, it is a tight garment. He said, if the garment is large enough, wrap it around the body covering the shoulders. And if it is tight, too short, then use it as an isar, tight around your waist only. Narrated Saul. The men used to pray with the prophet with their isars tied around their necks as boys used to do. Therefore the prophet told the woman not to raise their heads till the men sat down straight while praying. Chapter 7 To offer a salat the prayers in a Syrian cloak made by infidels. <laughs> Narrated Mugira bin Shuba. Once I was traveling with the Prophet and he said, O oh Mugira, take this container of water. I took it and Allah's messenger went far away till he disappeared. He answered the call of nature and was wearing a Syrian cloak. He tried to take out his hands from its sleeve, but it was, was very tight so he took out his hands from under it. <clears throat> I poured water and he performed ablution like that for prayers and passed his wet hands over his cuff socks made from thick fabric or leather and then prayed chapter 8 it is disliked to to the naked during a slot the prayers narrated jabir bin abdullah while allah's messenger was carrying stones along with the people of mecca for the building of the kaaba wearing an isar waist sheet cover his uncle al abbas said to him Oh my nephew, it will be better if you take off the, your isari uh, and put it over your shoulders underneath the stones. So he took off his isar and put it over his shoulders, but he fell unconscious and since then he had never been seen naked. <coughs> Chapter 9 To offer Salat prayer with a shirt, trousers, a tuban or a kaba, 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 um, an outer garment with full length sleeves. Narrated Abu Huraira. A man stood up and asked the Prophet about praying in a single garment. The Prophet said, As every one of you two garments? A man put a similar question to Umar, on which he replied, When Allah makes you wealthier, then you should clothe yourself properly during prayers. <coughs> Otherwise, one can pray with an isar and a rida, a sheet covering the upper part of the body. Isar and a shirt, isar and a kaba, trousers and a rida, trousers and a shirt, or trousers and a kaba, tuban and a kaba, or tuban and a shirt. The narrated added, I think that he also said a tuban, tuban and a rida. Narrated Ibn Umar, a person asked Allah's messenger, what should a murim wear? He replied, he should not wear shirts, trousers, a burnus, a hooded cloak, uh, or clothes, with clothes which are stained with safrun or wars, a kind of perfu perfume. Whoever does not find a sandal to wear can wear cups, socks made from thick fabric or leather but these should be cut short so as not to cover the ankles. <laughs> Chapter 10 What may be used to cover the private parts of the body? Narrated Abu Sayyid al-Qudri Allah's Messenger forbade istimal asama, wrapping one's body with a garment so that one cannot raise its end or take one's hands, hand out of it. <clears throat> he also forbade al Itiba, sitting on buttocks with knees close to the to abdomen and feet apart with the hands circling the knees, while wrapping oneself with a single garment without having a part of it over the private parts. 
narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet forbade two kind, kinds of sales, Ia al and Al-Nabida, Nibad. Uh, the former is a kind of sale in which the deal is completed in the buyer touches a thing without seeing or checking it properly and the latter is a kind of, of sale of a sale in which the deal is completed when a seller throws a thing towards the buyer giving him no opportunity to see touch or check it and the prophet forbade also istimal asama and uh, al itiba uh, in a single garment narrated abu huraira on the day of nar 10th of dhul hijjah in the year prior to the last Hajj of the Prophet, when Abu Bakr was the leader of the pilgrims in the Hajj, in that Hajj, Abu Bakr sent me along with other announcers to Mina to make a public announcement. No pagan is allowed to perform Hajj after this year, and no naked person is allowed to perform the Tawaf around the Kaaba. Then Allah's messenger sent Ali to re- read out the Surah. Surat Bara al Tauba al Tauba <coughs> to the people. So we made an announcement along with us on the day of Nar in Mina. No pagan is allowed to perform Hajj after this year, and no naked person is allowed to perform the Tawaf around the Kaaba. Chapter 11 To pray without Arida. Narrated Muhammad bin al Munqatir. I went to Jabir bin Abdullah and he was praying wrapped in a garment and his Rida was lying beside him. When he finished the prayers, I said, O oh Abdullah, you pray in a single garment while your Rida is lying beside you. He replied, Yes, I did it intentionally so that the ignorant ones like you might see me. I saw the Prophet praying like this. Chapter 12 what is said about the fi? Narrated Abdul Aziz. <coughs> Anas said, When Allah's Messenger invaded Kaibir, Kaibar, Kaibar, we offered the Fajr prayer there early in the morning. When it was still dark, the Prophet rode and Abu Tala rode too, and I was riding behind Abu Tala. The Prophet passed through the lane of Kaibar quickly, and my knee was touching the thigh of the Prophet. He uncovered his thigh, and I saw the whiteness of the thigh of the Prophet. When he entered the town, he said, Allahu Akbar, Kaibar is ruined. Whenever we approach near a hostile nation to fight, then evil will be the mourning of those who have been warned. He repeat, repeated his thrice. The people came out for the jobs and some of them said, Muhammad has come. Some of our companions added, with his army, we conquered Kaibar, took the captives and the booty was collected. The Hiya, Hiya came and said, O oh Allah's Prophet, give me a slave girl from the captives. The Prophet said, go and take any slave girl. He took a Safiya, he took Safiya bin Huya. A man came to the Prophet and said, O oh, Allah's Messenger, you gave Safiya bin Huyai to Dihia, Dihia, and she is the chief mistress of the tribes of Kureida and An Nadir, and she ben bef- and she befits none but you. <coughs> so the Prophet said, Bring him along with her. <coughs> so Dihia came with her, and when the Prophet saw her, he said to Dihia, Take any slave girl other than her from the captives. Anna said, the Prophet then manumitted her and married her. Tabit asked Anas, O oh, Abu Hamza, what did the Prophet pay her as Mar? He said, herself was her Mar, for he manumitted her and then married her. Anas added, while on the way um, um Sulaim dressed her for marriage ceremony, ceremony, and at night she sent her as a bride to the Prophet. <clears throat> so the Prophet was a bridegroom, and he said, Whoever has anything, food, should bring it. He spread out a leather sheet for the food, and some brought dates and others cooking butter. 
I think he unos mention a savak. So they prepared a dish of hais, a kind of meal, and that was um, Walima, the marriage banquet of Allah's messenger. Chapter 13 In how many, what sort of clothes a woman should offer Salat prayer? Narrated Aisha Allah's Messenger used to offer the Fajr prayer and some believing women covered with, with their wailing sheets uh, used to attend the Fajr prayer with him and, <clears throat> and then they would return to their, ho to their homes unrecognized. Chapter 14 If a person offered Salat prayer in a dress with marks uh, and looked at those marks during the Salat, narrated Aisha, the Prophet prayed in a kamisa, a square garment having marks during the prayer. He looked at its marks, so when he finished the prayer, he said, Take this kamisa, kamisa of mine to Abu Jam and get me his inbijaniya, a woolen garment without marks. I say the Kamisa has diverted my attention from the prayer. Narr narrated Aisha. <coughs> the Prophet said, I was looking at its Kamisa's marks during the prayers and I was afraid that it may put me in trial by taking away my, my attention. Chapter 15 if someone offers a sal offers salat prayer in a garment bearing marks of a cross or a picture, or picture, while he is salat, be annulled, and what is forbidden thereof. Narrated Anas. Aisha had a kiram, a film marked woolen curtain, with which she had screened one side of her home. The prophet said. Take away this kiram of yours as it as its pictures are still displayed in front of me during my prayer. Yet yeah, they divert my attention from the prayer. <laughs> Chapter 16 Whoever offered Salat prayer in a silk faruj and an outer garment open at the back and then took it off. Narrated Uqba bin Amir. The Prophet was given a silken faruj. As a present, he wore it while praying. When he finished, when he had finished uh, his prayer, he took it off violently, as it, um, as if with a strong aversion to it, and said, "It's it is not the dress of Allah, fearing pious people." <coughs> Chapter 17. It is permissible to offer salat prayer in a red garment. Narrated Abu Juhayfa. I saw Allah's messenger in a red leather tent and I saw Bilal taking the remaining water with which the Prophet had performed ablution. I saw the people taking the utilized water impati impatiently and whoever got some of it rubbed it on his body and those who could not get any took the moisture from the other's hands. Then I saw Bilal carrying a short spear or a stick which he planted in the ground. The Prophet came out, tucking up his red cloak, and led the people in prayer, and offered two rakat facing the Kaaba, taking a short spear or stick as a sutra for his prayer. I saw the people and animals passing in front of him, beyond his stick, beyond the stick. Chapter 18 it is permissible to offer Salat prayer on roofs, a pulpit or wood. Narrated Abu Hasim Saal bin Saad was asked about the Prophet's pulpit as to what thing it was made of. Saul replied, none remains alive amongst the people who knows about it better than I. It was made of tamarisk wood of the forest so and so. The slave of so and so. Uh, prepared it for Allah's Messenger. When it was constructed and placed in the mosque, Allah's Messenger stood on it, facing the Qibla and said, Allahu Akbar. And the people stood behind him 
and led the people in prayer. He recited and bowed and the people bowed behind him. Then he raised his head and stepped back, got down and prostra prostrated on the, on the ground. And then he again ascended the pulpit, recited, bowed, raised his head and stepped back, got down and prostrated, prostrate on the ground. So this is what I know about the pulpit. Ahmad bin Hanbal said, as for the prophet was at a higher level than the people. There is no harm according to the above mentioned hadith if the Imam is at a higher level than his followers during the prayers. Narrated Anas bin Malik Once Allah's messenger fell off, a, fell off a horse and his leg or shoulder got injured. He swore that he would not go to his wives for one month and he stayed in a Masruba. Uh, question mark question mark uh, altic room having stairs made of date palm trunks so his companions came to visit him and he led them in prayer sitting whereas his companions were standing when he finished the prayer he said imam is meant to be followed so when he says allahu akbar say allahu akbar and when he bows bow and when he prostrates prostrate and if he prays standing pray standing after the 29th day the prophet came down from the attic room and the people asked him oh Allah's messenger you swore that you will not go go to your wife for one, for one month he said the month is 29 days chapter 19 if the clothes of a prayer prayer pers person in prostration touch his wife uh, would uh, that make his Salat prayer invalid? Narrated Abdullah bin Shaddad Maimuna said Allah's messenger was praying while I was in my menses sitting beside him and sometimes his clothes would touch me during his prostration. Maimuna added he prayed on a kumra, a small mat sufficient just for the face and the hands while prostrating during prayers. Chapter 20 To offer a salat the prayers on the hasir, a mat that is made of the leaves of date palm, palm trees and is as long as or longer than a man's stature. Narrated Ishak Anas bin Malik said, My grandmother Muleika invited Allah's messenger for a meal which she herself had prepared he ate from it and said get up i will lead you in the prayer anas said uh, anas added i took my hasid washed it with the water as i it had become dark because of long use and a lost messenger stood on it the orphan damira or Ru, and i al aligned behind him and the old lady Muleika stood behind us, Allah's messenger led us in a prayer and offered two rakat and then left. Chapter 21 To offer us salat the prayers on a kumra, a small mat, hardly sufficient for the face and hands while prostrating during salat. Narrated Maimuna, Allah's messenger used to pray on kumra. Chapter 22 to offer a salat the prayers on the bed. Narrated Abu Sulama. Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, said, I used to sleep in front of Allah's Messenger, and my legs were op opposite his qibla, and in prostration he pushed my legs, and I withdrew them. And when he stood, I stretched them. Aisha added, In those days the houses were without lights. Narrated Aisha, Allah's Apostle, Allah Apostle prayed while I was lying like a dead body on his family bed, between him and his Qibla. Narrated Urva, the Prophet prayed while Aisha was lying be between him and his Qibla on the bed on which they used to sleep. Chapter 23, to prostrate on a garment in scorching heat. Narrated Anas bin Malik. We used to pray with the Prophet, and some of us used to place the ends of their clothes at the place 
of prostration because of scorching heat. Chapter 24 To offer Salat prayer with the shoes on Narrated Abu Maslama Say, Sayyid bin Yazid al Asti I asked, asked Anas bin Malik whether the Prophet had ever prayed with the shoes on. He replied, Yes. Chapter 25 To offer us Salat the prayers wearing kuf leather socks. Narrated Ibrahim Hamam bin al Harit said, I saw Jarir bin Abdullah urinating. Then he performed ablution and passed his wet hands over his cuffs, socks made from thick fabric or leather, stood up and prayed. He was asked about it. He replied that he had seen the Prophet doing the same. They approved of this narration as Jarir was one of those who embraced Islam very late. Narrated al mukira bin Shuba I helped the Prophet in performing ablution and he passed his wet hands over his cuffs and pray, prayed. Chapter 26 If someone does not prostrate properly Narrated Hudayfa that uh, he saw a person bowing and prostrating imperfectly. When he finished his Salat, Hudayfa told him that he had not offered Salat. The subnarrated added, I think that Hudayfa also said, Were you to die, you will die on a Sunnah legal way, other than that of Muhammad. Chapter 27 during prostrations, one should show the armpits and separate his forearms from his body. Narrated Abdullah bin Malik Ibn Buhayna When the Prophet prayed, he used to separate his arms from his body so widely that the whiteness of his armpits was visible. Chapter 28 Superiority of praying facing the Qibla with the toes toward it as well. Narrated Anas bin Malik, Allah's messenger said, whoever prays like us and faces our Qibla and eats our slaughter animals is a Muslim and is under Allah's and his apostles protection. So do not betray Allah by betraying those who are in his protection. Narrated Anas bin Malik, Allah's messenger said, I have been ordered to fight the people till they say none has the right to be worshipped by the law and if they say so, pray like our prayers, face our Qibla and slaughter as we slaughter, then their blood and property will be sacred to us and we will not interfere with them except legally and they, their reckoning will be with the law. Narrated Maimun bin Sia that they asked Anas bin Malik, O Abu Hamza, what makes the life and property of a person sacred? He replied, whoever says none has the right to be worshipped by the law, faces our Qibla during the prayers, prays like us and eats our slaughter animals, animal, then he is a Muslim and has got the same rights and obligations as other Muslims have. Chapter 29 The Qibla for the people of al Madina, Sham and the East Narrated Abu Ayyub Al Ansari. The Prophet said, while defecating, neither face nor turn your back to the Qibla, but face either east or west. Abu Ayyub added, when we arrived in the Sh in Sham, we came across some lavatories facing the Qibla. Therefore, we turn ourselves while using them and ask for Allah's forgiveness. Chapter 30 The Statement of Allah and Take Your People the Makam place of Ibrahim, Abraham, Abraham, or the stone on which Ab Abraham stood while he was building the Kaaba, as a place of prayer. For some of you, Salat, Igi, to Raqqa after the Tawaf of Kaaba. Narrated Amr bin Dinar. I asked Ibn Umar, can a person who has performed the Tawaf around the Kaaba for Umrah? but has not performed the Sai Tawaf of Safa and Marva, have a sexual relation with his wife? Ibn Umar replied, When the Prophet reached Mecca, 
he performed the top off around the Kaaba, circum, circum, circumambulated it seven times, and offered a Tura caught prayer at the place behind the station of Abraham, and then performed the top off Sa'i of Safa and Marwa. And verily, in Allah's Messenger, uh, you have a good example. Then we put the same question to Jabir bin Abdullah, and he too replied, He should not go near his wife for sexual relation till he has finished the tawaf of Safa and Marwa. Narrated Mujahid Someone came to Ibn Umar and said, Here is Allah's Messenger entering the Kaaba. Ibn Umar said, I went there, but the Prophet had come out of the, the Kaaba, and I found Bilal standing between its two doors. I asked Bilal, did the Prophet uh, pray in the Kaaba? Bilal replied, yes, he prayed two rakat between the two pillars, which are to your left on entering the Kaaba. Then Allah's Messenger came out and offered a two rakat prayer facing the Kaaba. Narrated Ibn Abbas When the Prophet entered the Kaaba, he invoked Allah in each and every side of it and did not pray till he came out of it and offered a two prayer facing the Kaaba and said, This is the Qibla. Chapter 31 During the oblig obligatory Salat prayers, one should face the Qibla Kaaba at Mecca, wherever one may be. Narrated Bara bin Asib. Allah's Messenger prayed facing Baytul Magdis for 16 or 17 months, but he loved to face the Kaaba at Mecca. So Allah revealed, Verily, we have seen the turning of your face to, to the heavens. Heaven. 244. So the Prophet faced the Kaaba, and the fools amongst the people, namely the Jews, said, what has turned them from their Qibla, Baytul Magdis, which they formerly observed? Allah revealed, Say, to Allah belongs the East and the West. He guides whom He wills will to, to a straight path. 242. A man prayed with the Prophet facing the Kaaba and went, went, out of, went out. He saw some of the Ansar praying the Asr prayer with their faces toward, towards Baytul Magdis. He said, I bear witness that I pray with Allah's Messenger facing the Kaaba. So all the people turn their faces towards the Kaaba. Narrated Jabir Allah's Messenger used to pray optional non obligatory prayer while riding on his mount Rahila. Wherever he turned and whenever he wanted to pray the compulsory prayer, he dismounted and prayed facing the Qibla. Narrated Abdullah, the Prophet prayed and subnarrated Ibrahim said, I do not know whether he prayed more or less than usual, and when he had finished the prayers, he was asked, O oh Allah's Messenger, has there been any change in the prayers? He said, What is it? The people said, You have prayed so much and so much. So the Prophet bent his legs, faced the Qibla, and performed two prostrations of Sahu, and finished the pr his prayers with Taslim by turning his face to the right and left saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah when he turned his face to us he said if there had been anything changed in the prayer surely I would have informed you but I am a human being like you and liable to forget like you so if I forget remind me and if any one of you is doubtful about this prayer he should follow what he thinks to be correct and complete his prayer according, accordingly and finish it and do two prostrations of Sahu. Chapter 32 What has been said about facing the Qibla Kaaba at Mecca and, where, and wherever considered um, that there was no need to repeat the Salat prayer if someone offered uh, prayers by mistake facing a direction other than that of the Qibla. Narrated Umar bin al Khattab, My Lord agree with me in three things. One, I said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I wish we took the station of Abraham as a praying place. 
for some of our prayers. So, so came the divine inspiration and take you people, the station of Abraham as a place of prayer for some of your prayers, e.g. two rakat of Tawaf of Kaaba, 225, two. And as regards the verse of the wailing of the women, I said, O oh Allah's messenger, I wish you order your wives to cover themselves from the men because good and bad ones talk to them. So the verse of the wailing of the woman was revealed. Free once the wives of the, the Prophet made a united front against the Prophet and has said to them, It may, may be if he, he, the Prophet, divorced you all that is Lord Allah will give him instead of your wives better than you. So this verse, the same as I had said, was revealed. 66.5 Narrated on us as about 395. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar. While the people were offering the Fajr prayer at Cuba near Medina, someone said someone came to them and said, It has been revealed to Allah's messenger tonight, and he has been ordered to pray facing the Kaaba. So turn your faces to Kaaba to the Kaaba. Those people were facing Sham, Jerusalem. So they turned their faces towards Kaaba at Mecca. Narrated Abdullah. Once the Prophet offered five rakat in Sur prayer, he was asked, Is there an increase in the prayer? The Prophet said, And what is it? They said, You have prayed five rakat. So he bent his legs and performed two prostration, prostrations of Sahu. Chapter 33 to scrape off the sputum of from the mask with the hand using some tool or other or using end tool. Narrated Anas bin Malik. The Prophet saw some sputum in the direction of the Qibla on the wall of the mosque and he, and he disliked that and the sign of disgust was apparent from his face. So he got up and scraped it off with his hand and said, Whenever any one of you stands for the prayer, he is speaking in private to his Lord, or his uh, Lord is between him and his Qibla. So none of you should spit in the direction of the Qibla, but one can spit to the, le to the left or under his foot. The Prophet then took the corner of his sheet and spat in it and folded it and said, Or you can do this. Uh, narrated Abdullah bin Umar Allah's messenger saw sputum on the wall of the mosque in the direction of the Qibla and scraped it off He faced the people and said whenever any one of you When any one of you is praying he should not spit in front of him because in the prayer Allah is in front of him Narrated Aisha the mother of faithful believers, Allah's messenger saw some nasal secre secretions, expectoration or sputum on the wall of the mosque in the direction of the Qibla and scraped it off. Chapter 34 To scrape the nasal secre secretion of the mosque with gravel. Narrated Abu Huraira and Abu Said. Allah's messenger, messenger saw some expectoration on the wall of the mosque. He took gra gravel and scraped it off and said, If any one of you wanted to spit, he should neither spit in front of him nor on his right, but he, should, but he could spit either on his left or under his left foot. Chapter 35 It is forbidden to spit on the right while in Salat prayers. Uh, narrated Abu Huraira and Abu Said. Allah's messenger saw some expectoration on the wall of the mosque. He took gravel and scraped it off and said, If any one of you wanted to spit, he should neither spit in front of him nor on his right, but could spit either on his left or under his left foot. Narrated Anas. The Prophet said, None of you should spit in front of in front or on his right, but he could spit either on his left or under his foot. Chapter 36 One should spit on the left side or under one's left foot. Narrated Anas bin Malik. The Prophet said, A faithful believer while in prayer is speaking in private to his Lord, so he should neither spit in front of him nor to his right side, but he could spit either on his left or under his foot. 
narrated Abu Sa'id. The Prophet saw sputum on the wall of uh, the mosque in the direction of the Qibla and scraped it off with gravel. Then he forbade spitting in front or on the right, but allowed it on one's left or under one's left foot. Chapter 37 The Expiation for Spitting on the mo- in the Mosque Narrated Anas bin Malek The Prophet said, Spitting in the mosque is a sin and its expiation is to bury it. Chapter 38 The Burying of the expo- expe- Expectoration in the Mosque Narrated Abu Huraira Prophet said, if any one of you stands for prayer, he should not spit in front of him because in prayer he is speaking in private to Allah. And he should not spit on his right as there is an angel, but he can spit either on his left or under his left foot and bury it. Yeah. Expectoration. Chapter 39. If the spit or sputum comes out sudden, suddenly, then one should spit in the corner of one's garnet. Narrated Anas. The Prophet saw expectoration on the wall of the mosque in the direction of the Qibla and scraped it off with his hand. It seemed that he disliked it and the sign of dis- disgust was apparent from his face. He said, if any one of you stands for the prayer, he is speaking in private to his Lord or his Lord is between him and his Qibla. Therefore, he should not spit towards the, his Qibla, but he could spit either on his left or under his foot. Then he took the corner of his sheet and spat in it, felt, folded it and said, or do this. Chapter 40 uh, Preaching of the Imam to the people regarding the Prophet offering of as the prayers and the mention of the Qibla, Kaaba at Mecca. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger said, Do you consider or see that my face is toward the Qibla? By Allah, neither your submissiveness nor your bowing is hidden from me. Surely I see you from my back. Narrated Anas bin Malik The Prophet led us in prayer and then got up on the pulpit and said, In your prayer and bowing I certainly see you from my back as I see you while looking at you. Chapter 41 it is permissible to say Majid Mosque of Bani so and so. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar. Allah's Messenger ordered for a horse race. The trained horses were to run from a place called Al Haifa to Taniyat Al Wada. And the horses which were not trained were to run from Al Taniyah to the Majid Mosque of Bani Suraik. The sub narrated added. Ibn Umar was one of those who took part in the race. Chapter 42 The distribution of goods or wealth uh, well, uh, and the hanging of a cluster of dates in, a, in the mosque. Narrated Anas Some goods came to Allah's messenger from Bahrain. The Prophet ordered the people to spread them in the mosque. It was the biggest amount of goods Allah's messenger had ever received left for prayer and did not even look at it. After finishing the prayer, he sat by those goods and gave from those to everybody he saw. Allah Abbas came to him and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, give me something too, because I gave ransom for myself and Akil. Allah's Messenger told him to take, so he stuffed his garment with it and tried to carry it away, but he failed to do so. He said, O oh Allah's Messenger, order someone to help me in lifting it. The Prophet refused. He then said to the Prophet, Will you please help me to lift it? Allah's Messenger refused. Then Al Abbas threw some of it and tried to lift it but failed. He again said, O oh Allah's Messenger, order some of the help me to lift it. He refused. Al Abbas then said to the Prophet, Will you please help me to lift it? He again refused. Then Al Abbas threw some of it and lifted it on his shoulder and went, shoulders and went away. Allah's Messenger kept on watching him till he disappeared from his sight and was astonished at his greediness. Allah's Messenger did not get up till the last coin was distributed. Chapter 43 Receiving an invitation to to dinner in the mosque and accepting it. Narrated Anas I found a prophet in the mosque along with some people. He said to me, 
did Abu Tala send you? I said, yes, he said, he said for a meal. I said, yes. Then he said to his companions, get up. They said, set out and I was ahead of them. Chapter 44, to give the, ju the judicial verdicts in the mosque and to perform the alihan between men and women, husbands and wives there. Narrated Sal bin Saad, a man said, O oh Allah's messenger, if a man finds another man with his wife committing adultery, should the husband kill him? Later on I saw them, the man and his wife, doing Leon in the mosque, taking oaths, one accusing and the other denying adultery. Chapter 45 If someone enters a house, should he offer prayers where he likes, or as he is told? And he should not look out to seek information about the place or do spying. Narrated uh, Itan bin Malik, uh, Itban bin Malik. Uh, the Prophet came to my house and said, Where do you like me to pray? I pointed to a place. The Prophet then said, Allahu Akbar. And we aligned behind him and he offered a two rakat prayer. Chapter 46 uh, About taking the mosques in the houses. Narrated uh, Itban bin Malik, who was one of the companions of Allah's Messenger and one of the Ansars who took part in the Battle of Badr. I came to Allah's Messenger and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I have weak eyesight and I lead my people in prayers. When it rains, the water flows in the valley between me and my people, so I cannot go to their mosque to lead them in prayer. O oh Allah's Messenger, I wish you would come to my house and pray in it, so that I could take the, that place as a musallah. Allah's Messenger said, Allah willing, I will do so. Next day after the sun rose high, Allah's Messenger and Abu Bakr came, and Allah's Messenger asked for permission to enter. I gave him permission, and he did not sit on entering the house, uh, house but said to me, Where do you like me to pray? I pointed to a place in my house, so Allah's Messenger stood there and said, Allahu Akbar, and we all got up and aligned behind him and offered a two rakat prayer and ended it with taslim. We requested him to stay for a meal called Kasira, which we had prepared for him. Many members of our family gathered in the house and one of them said, Where is Malik bin al Dukhaishin or Ibn al Dukshun? One of them replied, He is a hypocrite and does not love Allah and his apostle. Hearing that, Allah's Messenger said, Do not say so. Haven't you seen that he said, None has the right to be worshipped by Allah, for Allah's sake only? He said, Allah and his Apostle know better. We have seen him helping and advising hypocrites. Allah's Messenger said, Allah has forbidden the hellfire for those who say, None has the right to be worshipped by Allah, for Allah's sake only. Chapter 47 while entering the mosques, etc., one should start with the right foot. Narrated Aisha, the Prophet used to st start everything from the right for good things whenever it was possible in all affairs, all his affairs. For example, in washing, combing, combing, or wearing shoes. Chapter 48. Is it permissible to dig the graves of pagans of the period of ignorance and to use the place as a mosque? Narrated Aisha Um Habiba and Um Salama mentioned about the church they had seen in Ethiopia, in which there were, there were pictures. They told the Prophet about it, on which he said, If any religious man dies amongst those people, they will build a place of worship at this grave and make these pictures in it. They will be the worst creature in the sight of Allah on the day of resurrection. Narrated Anas When the Prophet arrived Medina, he dismounted at uh, Awali i Medina, amongst the tribe called Banu Amr bin Auf. He stayed there for 14 nights. Um, then he sent for Bani al Najjar, and they, they came armed with their swords as if I am looking just now, as the Prophet was sitting over his Rahila mount with Abu Bakr riding behind him, and all, all Banu an Najjar around him till he dismounted at the courtyard of Abu Ayyub's house. 
And the prophet loved to pray wherever at the time for the prayer was due even at sheepfolds. Later on, he ordered that a mosque should be built and sent for some people of Banu an Najjar and said, O Banu an Najjar, suggest to me the price of this walled piece of land of yours. They replied, No, by Allah, we do not demand its price except from Allah. Anas added, There were graves of pagans in it, and uh, some of it was unleveled, and there were some date palm trees in it. The Prophet ordered that the graves of the pagans be dug out and the unleveled land by level lead and the date palm trees be cut down. So all that was done. They aligned these cut date palm trees towards the Qibla in the mosque of the mosque as a wall and they also built two stone side walls of the mosque. His companions brought the stones while reciting some poetic verses. The Prophet was with them, and he kept on saying, There is no goodness except that of the hereafter. O oh Allah, so please forgive the Ansars and the emigrants. Chapter 49 To offer a salat, the prayer in a sheepfold. Narrated Abu al Tayyah. Question mark, question mark. Anna said, The Prophet prayed in the sheepfold. Later on, I heard him saying, he prayed in the sheepfolds before the construction of the mosque. Chapter 50 To offer as salat the prayer in the camel yards, the places where the camels are stationed. Narrated Nafi I saw Ibn Umar praying while taking his camel as a sitra in front of him, and he said, I saw the Prophet doing the same. Chapter 51 Whoever offered salat prayer with furnace or fire or any other worshipable, worshipable, worshipable um, thing in front of him, but he intended a lot solely for Allah. Narrated Abdullah bin Abbas, the sun ex eclipsed and Allah's messenger offered the eclipse prayer and said, I have been shown the hellfire now, and I never saw a worse and horrible sight than the sight I have, er I have seen today. Chapter 52 the dislikeness of offering a salat the prayers in graveyards. Narrated Ibn Umar, the Prophet had said, Offer some of your prayers, Nava feel at home, and do not take your houses as graves. Chapter 53 What is said about offering salat prayer at the places where the earth had sunk down and Allah's punishment had fallen. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, Allah's messenger said, do not enter the places of these people where Allah's punishment had fallen unless you do so weeping. If you do not weep, do not enter the, the places of these people, because Allah's curse and punishment which fell upon them may fall upon you. Chapter 54 To offer as salat the prayer in a church or in a temple, etc. Narrated Aisha Um Salama told Allah's messenger about the church which she had seen in Ethiopia and which was called Maria. She told him about the, the pictures which uh, she had seen in it. In it, Allah's messenger said, If any righteous pious man dies amongst them, they will build a place of worship at his grave and make these pictures in it. They are the worst creatures in the sight of Allah. Chapter 54 Na chapter 55 uh, chapter narrated Aisha and Abdullah bin Abbas when the last moment of the life of Allah's messenger came he started putting his kamisa on his face and when he felt hot and short of breath he took it off his face and said may Allah curse the Jews and Christians for they built the places of worship at the graves of their prophets the prophet was warning Muslims of what those had done. Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's messenger said, May Allah curse, may Allah's curse be on the Jews, for they built the places of worship at the graves of the prophets. Chapter 56, the sayings of the prophet, uh, PBUH. The earth has been made for me as, uh, for me has been made for me a majid place for praying and a thing to purify to perform tayammum. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah. Allah's messenger said, 
I have been given five things which were not given to any amongst the prophets before me. These are 1. Allah made me victorious by awe, by his frightening, by, by his frightening my enemies for a distance of one, one month's journey. 2. The earth has been made for me and for my followers a place for praying and a thing to perform tayammum. Therefore, my followers can pray wherever the time of prayer of a prayer is due. 3. The booty has been made halal, lawful for me, and we was not made so for anyone else. 4. Every prophet used to be sent for his, to his nation exclusive, exclusively, but I have been sent to all mankind. 5. I have been given the right of intercession on the day of resurrection. Chapter 57 Sleeping of a woman in the mosque and residing in it uh, Narrated Aisha There was a black slave girl belonging to an Arab tribe, and they manumitted her, but she remained with them. The slave girl said, Once one of the girls of that tribe came out wearing a red leather scarf decorated with precious stone. It fell from her, or she placed it somewhere else, somewhere. A kite passed by that place, saw it lying there and mistaking it for a piece of meat, flew away with it. Those people searched for it, but they did not find it. So they accused me of stealing it, and started searching me, and even searched my private parts. The slave girl further said, By Allah, while I was standing in, this, in that state with those people, the same kite passed by them and dropped the red scarf and it fell amongst them. I told them, this is what you accused me of, and I was innocent, and now this is it. Aisha added, that slave girl came to Allah's messenger and embraced Islam. She had a tent or a small room with a love roof on, in the mosque. Whenever she called on me, she had a talk with me, and whenever she sat with me, she would recite the following. The day of the scarf band was one of the wonders of our Lord. Rarely, he rescued me from the disbelievers town. Aisha added, once I asked her, what is the matter with you? Whenever you sit with me, you also recite the, these poetic verses. On that, she told me the whole story. Uh, chapter 58 Sleeping of a man, sleeping of a man in the mosque. Uh, narrated Nafi. Abdullah bin Umar said, I used to sleep in the mosque of the Prophet while I was young and uh, unmarried. Uh, narrated Saad bin Saad. Allah's messenger went to uh, Fatima's house but did not find Ali there. So he asked, Where is your cousin? She replied, There was something between us and he got angry with me and went out. He did not sleep midday nap in the house. Allah's messenger asked a person to look for him. That person came and said, O oh, Allah's Messenger, he Ali is sleeping in a mosque. Allah's Messenger went there and Ali was lying. His upper body cover had fallen down to one side of his body and he was covered with dust. Allah's Messenger started cleaning the dust from him saying, Get up, O Abu Turab, get up, O Abu Turab, literally means, O father of dust. Narrated Abu Huraira. I saw 70 of us Sufa men, and none of them had a rida, a garment covering the upper part of the body. They had either isars only, or sheets which they tied around their necks. Some of these sheets re reached the middle of their legs, and some reached their heels, and they used to gather them with their hands, lest their private parts should become naked. Chapter 59 To offer us salat the prayer, uh, we returning from a journey. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah. I went to the Prophet in the mosque. The sub-narrated Masar thought that Jabir had said, In the forenoon he ordered me to pray two rakat. He owed me some money and he repaid it to me and um, gave more than what was due to me. Chapter 60. If one entered a mosque, one should offer two rakat. Tahayat al Majid before sitting. Narrated Abu Qatada uh, al Aslami. Allah's Messenger said, If any one of you enters a mosque, he should pray two rakat before sitting. Chapter 61 Al Hadat, passing wind in the mosque. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger said, 
the angels keep on asking Allah's forgiveness for any one of you as long as he is at his musalla praying place and he does not pass wind hadat. They say, O oh Allah, forgive him. O oh Allah, be merciful to him. Chapter 62 The Construction of the Prophet's uh, PBU Mosque. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar. In the lifetime of Allah's Messenger, the mosque, mosque was built of adobes, its roof of the leaves of date palms, and its pillars of the stems of date palms. Abu Bakr did not alter it. Umar expanded it on the same pattern as it was in the lifetime of Allah's Messenger by using adobes, leaves of uh, date palms, and ch changing the pillars into wooden ones. Uh, Uthman changed it by expanding it to a great extent and built its walls with engraved stones and lime and made its pillars of uh, engraved stones and its roof of teak wood. Chapter 63 to cooperate in building a mosque. Narrated Ikrima. Ibn Abbas said to me, and to his son Ali, go to Abu Sa'id and listen to what he narrates. So we went and found him in a garden looking after it. He picked up his rida, wore it and sat down and started narrating till the topic of the construction of the mosque reached. Uh, he said, we were carrying one adobe at uh, a time while Amar was carrying two the Prophet saw him and started removing the dust from his body and said, May Allah be merciful to Amar. He will be inviting them, yet his murderers, the rebellious group, to paradise, and they will invite him to hellfire. Amar said, I seek refuge with Allah from affliction. Chapter 64 Employing the carp carpenter and the technical hand, Artson in making the wooden pulpit or building the mosque. Narrated Saul, Allah's messenger sent someone to a, to a woman telling her to order her slave carpenter to, pre pre to prepare a wooden pulpit for him to sit on. Narrated Jabir, oh, a woman said, O oh, Allah's messenger, shall I get something constructed for you to sit on as I have a slave who is a carpenter? He replied, yes, if you like. So she had that pulpit constructed. Chapter 65 The Superiority of Whoever Built a Mosque Narrated Ubaidullah al Kablani. I heard Uthman bin Affan say, when people argued too much about his intention to reconstruct the mosque of Allah's Messenger, you have talked too much. I heard a prophet saying, whoever built a mosque, um, Bukair thought that Asim, another subnarrated added, Intending Allah's pleasure, Allah will bid for him a similar place in paradise. Chapter 66 While passing through a mosque, one should better hold the arrowheads with the hand. Narrated Amr I heard Jabir bin Abdullah saying, A man passed through the mosque carrying arrows. Allah's apostle said to him, Hold them by their heads. Chapter 67 Passing through the mosque is permissible, narrated Abu Burda bin Abdullah, on the authority of his father. The Prophet said, whoever passes through our mosques or markets with Arabs should hold them by their heads, lest he should injure a Muslim. Chapter 68 What is said about reciting poetry in the mosque, narrated Hassan bin Thabit al-Ansari. I asked Abu Huraira. By Allah, tell me the truth whether you heard a prophet saying, O oh Hassan, reply on my reply on behalf of Allah's messenger. O oh Allah, help him with the Holy Spirit. Abu Huraira said, Yes. Chapter 69 The presence of spearmen with their spears in the mosque is permissible. Narrated Aisha. Once I saw Allah's messenger at the door of my house while some Ethiopians were playing in the mosque, displaying their skills skill with spears. Allah's messenger was screening me with, the, with, with his reader so as to enable me to see their display. Urwa said that Aisha said, I saw the Prophet and the Ethiopians were playing with their spears. Chapter 70 Mentioning about sales and purchases on the pulpit in the mosque. Narrated Aisha 
But Ida came to seek my help regarding her many mission. I told herself, I told herself, you like, I will pay your price to your masters, but your Vala allegiance will be for me. Her masters said, masters said, if you like, you can pay what remains of the price of her many mission. Sufyan, the subnarrated one said, or if you like, you can manumit her, but her inheritance al Walla would be for us. When Allah's messenger came, I spoke to him about it. He said, buy her and manumit her. No doubt, al Walla is for the manumitted. Then Allah's messenger stood on the pulpit, or Allah's messenger ascended the pulpit, as Sufyan, Sufyan once said, and said, what about some people who impose conditions which are uh, not present in the last book? Laws. Whoever imposes conditions which are not in the last book's book laws, his conditions will be invalid even if he imposed them a hundred times. Chapter 71 Asking a debtor, debtor, asking a de debtor, debtor to repay what he owes and catching the debtor in the mosque. Uh, narrated Cobb. In the mosque, I asked Ibn Abi Hadrat to pay the debts which he owed to me, uh, and our voices grew louder. Allah's messenger heard that while he was in his house, so he came to us, raising the curtain of his room, and said, O Kaab, I replied, La Baik, O Allah's messenger. He said, O Kaab, reduce your depth, depth to one half, uh, gesturing with his hand. I said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I have done so. Then Allah's Apostle said to Ibn Abi Hadrad, Get up and pay the debt to him. Debt. Uh, chapter 72 Sweeping, cleaning of the mosque, and removing rags, dirt, and sticks from it. Narrated Abu Huraira. A black man or a, bl or a black woman used to sweep the mosque, and he or she died. The Prophet asked about her or him. He was told that she or he had died. He said, why didn't you not inform me, show me his grave or her grave? So he went to her his grave and offered her his funeral prayer. Chapter 73 The order of banning the trade of alcoholic drinks was issues in the mosque. Narrated Aisha When the verses of Surat al-Baqarah about the Ushri Riba was revealed, the Prophet went to the mosque and recited them in front of the people and then banned the trade of alcohol. Chapter 74 Servants for the Mosque uh, Narrated Abu Rafi Abu Huraira said, A man or a woman used to clean the mosque. A sub-narrator said, Most probably, probably a woman. Then he narrated the hadith of the Prophet. Chapter 75 to fasten a prisoner or a debtor in the mosque. Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, Last night a big demon, Afret, from the jinns came to me and wanted to interrupt my prayers or said something similar, but Allah enabled me to overpower him. I wanted to fasten him to one of the pillars of the mosque so that all of you should see him in the morning, but I remembered the statement of my brother Solomon as stated in the Quran. In the Quran. My Lord, forgive me and bestow on me a kingdom such as shall not belong to anybody after me. 38.35 The sub-narrated Rahu said, He, the demon, was dismissed, humiliated. Chapter 76 To take a bath on embracing Islam and fasten a prisoner in the mosque. Narrated Abu Huraira The Prophet sent some horsemen to Najd and they brought a man called Fumama bin Utal from Bani Hanifa. They fastened him to one of the pillars of the mosque. The Prophet came and ordered them to release him. He went to a garden of date palms near the mosque, took a bath and entered the mosque again and said, None has the right to be worshipped but Allah and Muhammad is his apostle, yet he embraced Islam. Chapter 77 To pitch a tent in the, mo in the mosque for patients, etc. Narrated Aisha On the day of al Kandak, Gond Battle of the Trench, the med medial arm Wayne of Saad bin Mu'ad question mark, question mark, was injured and the Prophet pitched a tent in the mosque to look after him. There was another tent for Banu Ghaffar in the mosque 
and the blood started flowing from Saad's tent to the, to the tent of Bani Gafar. They shouted, O oh, occupants of the tent, what is coming from you to us? They found that Saad's wound was bleeding profusely and Saad died in his tent. Chapter 78 To take the camel inside the mosque if necessary Narrated Um Salama I complained to Allah's Messenger that I was sick. He told me to perform the tawaf behind the people while riding. So I did so and Allah's Messenger was praying beside the Kaaba and reciting the surah starting with Vatur wa Kitabin Mastur. Chapter 79 Chapter Narrated Anas bin Malik, two of the companions of the Prophet departed from him, from him on a dark night and were led by two lights like lamps going in front of them from Allah as a miracle, light, lighting the way in front of them. And when they parted, each of them was accompanied by one of these lights till they reached their respective houses. Chapter 80 al Kauka, a small door and a path in the mosque. Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri. The Prophet delivered a sermon and said, Allah gave a choice to one of his slaves, either to choose this world or what is with him in the hereafter. He chose the latter. Abu Bakr wept. I said to myself, why is this sheikh weeping? If Allah gave choice to one of his slaves, either to choose this world or what is with him in the hereafter, and he chose the latter, and that slave was Allah's messenger himself. Abu Bakr knew more than us. The Prophet said, O oh, Abu Bakr, don't weep, the Prophet added. Abu Bakr has favored me much with his property and the company. If I were to take a Khalil from mankind, I would certainly have taken Abu Bakr, but the Islamic Brotherhood, but the Islamic Brotherhood and friendship is sufficient. Close all the gates in the mosque as, except that of Abu Bakr. Narrated Ibn Abbas Allah's Messenger in his fatal illness came out with a piece of cloth tied around his head and sat on, on the pulpit. After thanking and praising Allah, he said, There is no one who had done me more favor to me with life and property than Abu Bakr bin Abi Kuhafa. If I were to take a Khalil, I would certainly have taken Abu Bakr, but the Islamic Brotherhood is superior. Close all the small all the small doors in this mosque except that of Abu Bakr. Chapter 81 The Doors and Locks of the Kaaba and the Mosques Narrated Nafi Ibn Umar said, The Prophet arrived at Mecca and, um, and sent for Uthman bin Tala. He opened the gate of the Kaaba, and the Prophet Bilal, Usama bin Said, and Uthman bin Tala entered the Kaaba, and then they closed its door from inside. They stayed there for an hour and then came out. Ibn Umar added, I quickly went to Bilal and asked him whether the Prophet had prayed. Bilal replied, He prayed in it. I asked, Where? He replied, Between the two pillars. Ibn Umar added, I forgot to ask how many raka he, the Prophet, had prayed in the Kaaba. Chapter 82 The Entering of a Pagan in the Mosque Narrated Abu Huraira Allah's Messenger sent some horsemen to Naj, and they brought a man called Fumama bin Uttal from Bani Hanifa. They fastened him to one of the pillars of the Mosque. Chapter 83 Raising the Voice in the Mosque Narrated uh, Al Saib bin Yasid. I was standing in the mosque and somebody threw a gravel at me. I looked and found that he was Uz Umar bin Al Khattab. He said to me, Fetch those two men to me. When I did, he said to them, Who are you or where do you come from? They replied, We are from Taif. Umar said, Where are you from the city, Medina? I will punish you for raising your voices in the mosque of Allah's Messenger. Narrated Kaab bin Malik During the lifetime of Allah's Messenger, I asked Ibn Abi Hadrad in the mosque to pay the debts which he owed to me, and our voices grew so loud that Allah's Messenger heard them while he was in his house. 
So he came to us after raising the curtain of his room. The Prophet said, O Ka bin Malik, I replied, La Baik, O Allah's Messenger. He gestured, gestured with his hand to me to reduce the death to one half. I said, O Allah's Messenger, have, have done it. Allah's Messenger said to Ibn Hadrad, Get up and pay it. Chapter 84 The Religious Gatherings in Circle the, rel the religious gathering in circles and sitting in the mosque. Narrated Nafi. Ibn Umar said, While the Prophet was on the pulpit, a man asked him how to offer the night prayers. He replied, Pray two rakat at a time, and then two, and then two, and so on. And if you are afraid of the dawn, the approach uh, of the time of the Fajr prayer, pray one rakat, and that will be the vitr for all the rakat which you have offered. Ibn Umar said, the last rakat of the night prayer should be odd, for the Prophet ordered it to be so. Narrated Ibn Umar, a man came to the Prophet while he was delivering the sermon and asked him how to offer the night prayers. The Prophet replied, pray two rakat at the time, and then two, and then two, and so on, and if you are afraid of dawn, the approach of the time of the Fajr prayer, Pray one rakat, and that will be the vitr for all the rakat which you have prayed. Narrated Ubaidullah bin Abdullah bin Umar. A man came, called the Prophet while he was in the mosque. Narrated Abu Waqid al Laiti. While Allah's Messenger was sitting in the mosque with some people, three men came. Two of them came in front of Allah's Messenger, and the third one went away. And then one of them found a place in the circle and sat there while the second man sat behind the gathering and the third one went away uh, when Allah's messenger finished his preaching. He said, Shall I tell you about uh, these three persons? One of them betook himself to Allah and so Allah accepted him and accom accommodated him. The second felt shy before Allah so Allah did the same for him and sheltered him in his mercy and did not punish him. While the third turned his face from Allah and went away, so Allah turned his face from him, from him likewise. Chapter 85 To lie flat on the back in the mosque Nar Narrated Abad bin Tamim That his uncle said, I saw Allah's messenger lying flat on his back in the mosque with uh, one leg on the other. <laughs> Narrated Said bin al Musayab that Umar and uh, Uthman used to do the same. Chapter 86, 86 If a mosque is built on a road, it should not be a cause of harm for, for the people. Narrated Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, I had seen my parents following Islam since I attained the age of puberty. Not a day passed, but the Prophet visited us both in the mornings and evenings. My father, Abu Bakr, thought of building a mosque in the courtyard of his house and he did so. He used to pray and recite the Quran in it. The pagan woman and the children used to stand by him and look at him with surprise. Abu Bakr was a soft-hearted person and could not help weeping while reciting the Quran. The chiefs of the Kurish pagans became afraid of that. Yeah, that the children and women might be affected by the recitation of the of Quran. Chapter 87 To offer a salat, the prayers in a mosque situated in a market. Narrated Abu, Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, The prayer offered in congregate, 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 pr pr the prayer offered in conger congregation. It is 25 times more superior in reward to the prayer offered alone in one's house or in a business center. Because uh, if one performs ablution and does it perfect perfectly and then proceeds to the mosque with the sole intention of praying, then for each step which he takes towards the mosque, Allah upgrades him a degree in reward and forgives crosses out one sin till he enters the mosque. When he enters the mosque, he is considered in prayer as long as he is waiting for the prayer. For the prayer, and the angels angels keep on asking for Allah's forgiveness for him, and they keep on saying, 
O oh Allah, be merciful to him. O oh Allah, forgive him. As long as he keeps on sitting at his praying place and does not pass wind. See Hadith number 620. Chapter 88 to clasp, to clasp one's hands by interlocking the fingers in the mosque or outside the mosque. Narrated Ibn Umar or uh, Ibn Ahmed. The Prophet clasps his hands by interlacing his fingers. Narrated Abdullah that Allah's Messenger said, O oh, Abdullah bin Amr, what will be your condition when you will be left with the sediments of worse people? They will be in conflict with each other. Narrated Abu Musa. The Prophet said, A faithful believer to a faithful believer is like the bricks of a wall, enforcing each other, while saying that the Prophet clasps his, fin his hands by interlacing his fingers. Nar narrates Ibn Siren. Abu Huraira said, Allah's Messenger led us in one of the two Isha prayers. Abu Huraira named the prayer, but I forgot it. Abu Huraira added, he prayed two rakat and then finished the prayer with Taslim. He stood up near a piece of wood uh, lying across the mosque and leaned on it in such a way as if he was angry. Then he put his right hand over the left and clasped his hands by interlacing his fingers and then put his J right cheek on the back of his left hand. The people who were in haste left the mosque through its gates. They wonder whether the prayer was redu reduced and amongst them were Abu Bakr and Umar but they hesitated to ask the Prophet. A long-handed man called Dul Yadain asked the Prophet, O oh Allah's Messenger, have you forgotten or has the prayer been reduced? The Prophet replied, I have neither forgotten nor has the prayer been reduced. The Prophet added, Is what Dul Yadain has said true? They the people said, Yes, it is true. The Prophet stood up again and led the prayer, completing the remaining prayer forgotten by him and preferring to sleep, and then said, Allahu Akbar, and then he did a prostration as he used to prostrate, or longer than that. He then raised his head saying, Allahu Akbar, he then again said, Allahu Akbar, and prostrated as he used to prostrate, uh, or longer than that. Uh, then he raised his head and said, Allahu Akbar, the sub narrated added, I think that they asked Ibn Sarin whether the Prophet completed the prayer with Taslim. He replied, I heard that Imran bin Hussein had said, then he, the Prophet, did Taslim. Chapter 89 The mosques which are on the way to Al Madinah and the places where the Prophet uh, PBUH had offered Salat prayers. Uh, narrated Fudail bin Sulaiman, Sulaiman, no, Su Sulaiman. Uh, Musa bin Uqba said, I saw Sal Salim bin Abdullah looking for some places on the way and pray there. He narrated that his father used to pray there and um, had seen the Prophet praying at those very places. Narrated Nafi on the authority of Ibn Umar who said, I used to pray at those places. Musa, the narrated, added, I asked Salim, on which he said, I agree with Nafi concerning those places, except the mosque situated at the, the place called Sharaf al Qurawa. The narrated hadith is about the various places on the way from Medina to Mecca where the Prophet prayed and is not translated. See translation for hadith A484 about. above. See translation for Hadith 484 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 above. Virtues virtues of the prayer hall, Sutra of the Musalla. Uh, chapter 90. The Sutra of the Imam is also a Sutra for those who are behind him. Narrated Ibn Abbas. Once I came riding a she-ass when I had just attained the age of puberty. 
Allah's Messenger was offering the prayer at Mina with no wall in front of him and I passed in front of some of the row. There I dismounted and let my she-ass loose to grace and enter the row and nobody objected to me about it. Narrated Ibn Umar Whenever Allah's Messenger came out on Eid day, he used to order that uh, a harba, question mark, question mark, a short spear to be planted in front of him as a sutra for his prayer and then he used to pray facing it with the people behind him and he used uh, to do the same while on a journey. After the Prophet, this practice was adopted by the Muslim rulers who followed these traditions. Uh, narrated Aun bin Abi Juhayfa. I heard my father saying, the Prophet led us and prayed a Turaqat Sur prayer and then a Turaq at Asr prayer at uh, al Bata. Question mark, question mark, with a short spear planted in front of him as a sutra. As a sutra. While women and donkeys were passing in front of him beyond that stick. Chapter 91. What should um, be the distance between the person offering Salat prayer and the Sutra? Narrated Sal bin Sa'ad. The distance, distance between the Musalla of Allah's Messenger and the wall was just sufficient for a sheep to pass through. Narrated Salama. The distance between the wall of the mosque and the pulpit was hardly enough for a sheep to pass through. Chapter 92 to offer a salat, the prayer, using a harba, a short spear, as a sutra. Narrated Abdullah. The Prophet used to get a harba planted in front of him as a sutra and pray behind it. Chapter 93. To offer a salat, the prayer, using an amasa, a spearheaded stick, as a sutra. Narrated Aun bin Abu Juhayfa. That he had heard his father saying, Allah's messenger came to us at uh, midday and water was brought for his ablution. He performed ablution and led us in Sur and Asr prayer with a short uh, spear or stick planted in front of him as a sutra while women and donkeys were passing be beyond it. Narrated Anas, bin, Anas ibn Malik Whenever the Prophet uh, went for answering the call of nature I and another boy used to go after him with a staff, a stick or a short spear or stick and a tumbler of water and when he finished from answering the call of nature we would hand that tumbler of water to him. Uh, chapter 94 Sutra for the prayer in Mecca and elsewhere Narrated Abu Juhayfa Allah's messenger came out at midday and offered a Turaqat, Sur and Asr prayers at al Bata and a short spear or, or stick was planted in front of him as a sutra. He performed ablution and the people took the remaining water left after his ablution and rubbed their bodies with it. Chapter 95 uh, To offer a salat the prayer facing a pillar uh, Narrated Yasid bin al ubaid I used to accompany Salama bin al aqwa and he used to pray behind the pillar which was near the place uh, where the Qurans were kept. I used, uh, I said, O Abu Muslim, uh, I see you all seeking to pray behind this pillar. He replied, I saw Allah's messenger always seeking to pray near that pillar. Narrated Anas, I saw the most famous, pers famous people amongst the companions of the Prophet hurrying towards the pillars at the, at the Maghrib prayer before the Prophet came for a prayer. Chapter 96 To offer non-congregational asalat the prayers between the pillars. Uh, narrated, Imar, narrated Ibn Umar The Prophet entered the Kaaba along with Usama bin Said, Uthman bin Tala and Bilal and remained there for a long time. When they came out, I was the first man to enter the Kaaba. I asked Bilal, where did the Prophet pray? Bilal replied, between the two front pillars. Narrated Nafi. Abdullah bin Umar said Allah's Messenger entered the Kaaba along with Usama bin Said, Bilal and Uthman bin Tala uh, al-Hajjabi. 
I closed the door and stayed there for some time. I asked Bilal when he came out, what did the Prophet do? He replied, he offered prayer with one pillar to his left and one to his right and three behind. In those days the Kaaba was supported by six pillars. And Malik said, there were two pillars on his, um, on his the Prophet's right side. Chapter 97, Chapter Narrated Nafi Whenever Abdullah entered the Kaaba, he used to go ahead leaving the door of the Kaaba behind him. He would proceed until the remaining distance between him and the opposite wall above about three cubits. Then he would off prayer there where the Prophet had offered Salat, as Bilal informed me. Ibn Umar said, it does not matter for any of us to offer prayers at any place inside the Kaaba. Virtues of, of the prayer hall, Sutra of the Musalla. Chapter 98 To offer a Salat, the prayer facing a Rahila camel, a free, a free, and a, tr a tree or a camel saddle as a sutra. Narrated Nafi. The Prophet used to make a she camel sit across and he would pray facing it as a sutra. I asked, what would the Prophet do if the she camel was provoked, provoked and moved? He said, he would take its camel saddle and put it in front of him and pray facing its back part as a sutra. And Ibn Umar used to do the same. This indicates that one should not pray except behind a sutra. Chapter 99 To offer a salat the prayer facing a bed. Narrated Aisha Do you make us women equal to dogs and donkeys? While I used to lie in my bed, the Prophet would come and pray facing the middle of the bed. I used to, con to consider it not good to stand in front of him in his prayers. So I used to slip away slowly and quietly from the foot of the bed till I got out of my guilt. Chapter 100 The person offering Salat prayer should repulse the, that person who tries to pass in front of him. Narrated Abu Said. The Prophet said what is ascribed to him in the following hadith. Narrated Abu Sali as Saman. I saw Abu Sa'id al-Qudri praying on a Friday behind something which acted as a sutra. A young man from Bani Abi Mu'ayt wanted to pass in front of him, but Abu Sa'id repulsed him with a push on his chest. Finding no alternative, he again tried to pass, but Abu Sa'id pushed him with a greater force. The young man abused Abu Sa'id and went to Marwan and lodged a complaint against Abu Sa'id and Abu Sa'id followed the young man to Marwan who asked him, O oh, Abu Sa'id, what has happened between you and the son of your brother? Abu Sa'id said to him, I heard a prophet saying, if anyone, anybody amongst you is praying behind something as a sutra and somebody tries to pass in front of him, then he should repulse him and if he refuses, he should use, fo use force against him for he is a shaitan, a satan. Chapter 101 The sin of a person who passes in front of a person offering Salat uh, Narrated Busser bin Said That Said bin Khalid sent him to Abi Juhaym to ask him what he had heard from Allah's Messenger about a person passing in front of another person who was praying. Abu Juhaym replied, Allah's Messenger said, if the person who passes in front of another person is in prayer knew the magnitude of his sin he would prefer to wait for 40 days, months or years, rather than to pass in front of him. Abu An Nadir said, I do not remember exactly whether he said 40 days, months or years. Uh, chapter 102 A man facing a man while offering Salat prayer. Narrated Aisha The things which annulled the prayers were mentioned before me. They said, prayer is annulled by a dog a donkey and a woman if they pass in front of the peer praying people. I said, you have made us yet woman dogs. I saw the prophet praying while I used to lie in my bed between him and the Qibla. Whenever I was in need of something, I would slip away for I disliked to face him. Chapter 103 
to offer a salat, the prayer behind a sleeping person, narrated Aisha. The Prophet used to pray while I was sleeping across in his bed in front of him. Whenever he wanted to pray with it, he would wake me up and I would pray with it. Chapter 104 To offer Nawafil non obligatory prayers behind a sleeping woman. Narrated Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, I used to sleep in front of Allah's Messenger with my legs opposite his, opposite his Qibla facing him, and whenever he prostrated, he pushed my feet and I withdrew them. Uh, and whenever he stood, I stretched them. Aisha added, In those days, there were no lamps in the houses. Chapter 105 Whoever says nothing else as salat, the prayer, is yeah, nothing of what the others do, not the praying person himself. Narrated Aisha The things which annul prayer were mentioned before me, and those were a dog, a donkey, and a woman. I said, you have compared us women to donkeys and dogs. By Allah, I saw the Prophet praying while I used to lie in my bed between him and the Qibla. Whenever I, I was in need of something, I disliked to sit and trouble the Prophet, so I would slip away by the side of, the, of his feet. Narrated Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, Allah's messenger, used to get up at night and pray while I used to lie across between him and the Qibla on his family's bed. Chapter 106 If a small girl is carried on one's neck during the Salat prayer Narrated Abu Qalada, Qatada al-Ansari Allah's Messenger was praying and he was carrying Umama, the daughters of Zainab, the daughter of Allah's Messenger and she was the daughter of uh, As bin Rabia bin Abd Shams When he prostrated he put her down and when he stood he carried her on his, on his neck. Chapter 107 To offer Salat prayer facing a bed occupied by a menstruating woman. Narrated Maimuna bint al Harith. My bed was beside the praying place, Musalla of the Prophet, and uh, sometimes his garment fell on me while I used to lie in my bed. Narrated Maimuna The Prophet used to pray while I used to sleep beside him during my per periods, menses, and in prostration. His garment used to touch me. Chapter 108 Is it permissible to touch or push one's wife in prostration in order to prostrate proper properly? Narrated Aisha It is not good that you people have made us women equal to dogs. And donkeys, no doubt, I saw Allah's messenger praying while I used to lie between him and the Qibla. And when he wanted to prostrate, he pushed my legs and I withdrew them. Chapter 109 A woman can remove troublesome or offensive things from a person in Salat prayer. Narrated Amr bin Maimun. Question mark, question mark. Abdullah bin Masood said, while Allah's Messenger was praying beside the Kaaba, there were, there were some Quraysh people sitting in a gathering. One of them said, Don't you see this who does deeds just to show off? Who amongst you can go and bring the dung, blood and the above abdominal contents, in intestines, etc. of the slaughtered camels of the family of so and so, and then wait till he prostrates and put that in between his shoulders. The most unfortunate, unfortunate amongst them, Uqba bin Abi Mu'ayt, went and brought them. And when Allah's messenger prostrated, he put them between his shoulders. The Prophet remained in prostration, and they laughed so much that they fell on each other. A passerby went to Fatima, who was a young girl in those days. She came running, and the Prophet uh, was still in prostration. She removed them and cursed upon the Quraysh on their faces. When Allah's Messenger completed his prayer, he said, O oh Allah, take revenge on Quraysh. He said so thrice and added, O oh Allah, take revenge on Amr bin Hisham, Utba bin Rabia, Shaiba bin Rabia, Al Walid bin Utba, Umayya bin Kalaf, Uqba bin Abi Mu'ayt, and, uh, and Umar uh, bin Al Walid.
Abdullah added, By Allah, I saw all of them dead in the battlefield on the day of Badr, and they were dragged and thrown in the Kalib, Kalib, a well, at Badr. Allah's messenger then said, Allah's curse has descended upon the people of the Kalib well.